linda Deportiva y con swing Deportiva y con swing La factoría del deporte de este New York para ti Es una máquina Es una máquina Pensada para ti Pensada para ti Número uno en las redes Dale like a compartir Con informaciones importantes siempre frescas Y con entrevistas que te ponen de cabeza Lo mejor del deporte lo encontrarás aquí Búscale en las redes Dale like a compartir Suscríbete Ay sí Infórmate Ok Chris, uh, good to see you. Good to see anything baseball wise. So uh, thanks for being there. Can you uh, can you describe, uh, you know, your first day with your guys there and give us a little idea who who has uh, been invited to this uh, camp? Sure. I mean, uh, first day of camp is always an exciting time. Um, you look forward to seeing players and staff that perhaps you haven't seen in a while. Uh, we have had a lot of players, you know, working out here at our facility. We operate with an open, open, uh, open facility policy. Uh, so we welcome players in there and we've got staff that have been working hard uh, this off season. And with the official start today, we've got uh, additional staff that have come in and uh, now we've got players that that have increased the the size of uh, the workouts here um, but today was a good day um, was able to, to meet with the players uh, we, we had a staff meeting yesterday we, we were able to have a productive workout and uh, you know feel feel pretty good about things the makeup of the camp uh, you know, it's a, a mix of some, you know, upper level players uh, that usually would be perhaps backing up major league games or, or even participating in a major league camp. Uh, and then we have some young prospects, uh, whether it be newly drafted, newly signed international players that are here. So it's an opportunity for some of our older players to mix in with our younger players. There's always a, a leadership component to that um, with, with uh, you know, our staff members here. So Day one is is pretty much in the books here, and I would say it was a successful one. With the um, with the idea, you can't you know speak much about anything negotiations wise. We understand that, but uh, is is there a, a thought of readiness for minor leaguers, uh, especially some of the guys that are uh, are in camp uh, trying to make the team to try to get them ready in case. Uh, there is a settlement and, and games need to be played uh, pretty quickly. Well, I think the, re the real focus is, you know, the beginning of April, beginning of uh, whether it be a minor league season or major league season, this certainly is a uh, very important time, regardless of what camp uh, or when your first game really is, certainly on the pitching side that there's, you need to have a proper buildup to pitch in a competitive environment, like whether it be an inter squad or an exhibition game, but uh, these guys are, are hungry to prepare for their seasons. Um, you know, you always need to monitor whether it be workload or intensity when you're in February. Um, you know, you don't want to get ahead of yourselves. Uh, you can get pretty excited. Um, But you can kind of get ahead of themselves. And, you know, one of the primary focuses of our staff is to, 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 to pace this appropriately for our players so they can get out and have productive and healthy seasons. Next question comes from Scott Merkin. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Good, Merk. I wanted to ask you about a specific player, uh, your top pick last year, Colson Montgomery. I know you've talked to him, talked to us a little bit about him, but What's just struck you about his talent, his makeup since he's, you know, come to the organization? Yeah, Colson's a, you know, he's a gifted athlete. Um, you know, he, he's, you know, and it's well documented, his focus on both basketball and baseball. And now it's going to be certainly primarily baseball. Uh, you know, the more I'm around, you know, Colson, the more impressed I, I am with his presence, his confidence. Um, you know, and that's off the field, but certainly how he carries himself on the field. Uh, you know, he, you know, he's, he's always under control. There is no panic. Um, you know, you, you, when you draft shortstops or up, up the middle type 
players, you're looking for certain qualities. And I, and I feel like Colson has that. Um, you know, we, we know that the amount of baseball he's played might be a little bit less than, than some other players that, that come into our system. But uh, Colson is, is, is pretty polished. He really is. And I, I noticed that uh, and our scouts did as well when he was an amateur. But, um, you know, on the professional side and what he accomplished last season in Arizona and being around him in various mini camps, uh, this guy, although he perhaps hasn't played as much as other people, I feel like he's he's going to catch up quickly and accelerate uh, and look forward to what 2022, the 2022 season holds for him. But colson has got a... Uh, He's got a sweet swing. He stays through the baseball. He, he's under the control in the box, um, which is not surprising just based on, you know, his temperament in general. Um, uses the whole field. And then on the defensive side, you know, he, he's a bigger guy. Um, you, know, you know, you don't see too many guys with his size um, at the shortstop position nowadays. Um, but there are examples. So there's guys historically, and we believe based on, you know, his foot speed, um, his ability to, to use the or see the field in, in the, the strong arm that he has, that he's going to be able to, to, to be, a, uh, be a shortstop in this game for a long time. Next question comes from Lamont Pope. Go ahead, Lamont. Hey, Chris. Uh, notice that uh, Suspidus is one of those guys that's at the camp as well. Just, just what's that next step in his progress as well? You know, Cespi, um unfortunately, got a little bit of a late late start to the season last year due to visa issues. And we sent him to Winston-Salem, uh, did very well and got him a taste of double A. Um, and he was fairly productive there um, too. So uh, Sespi, you know, nothing's really changed in regards to our excitement for, for what he's able to do. He's got solid tools across um, in regards to some, some adjustments that, that he needs to make. You know, I'd say it's really being under control in the box, uh, being more selective. Uh, there's certain types of pitches right now that he tends to 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 want to chase and and even miss, where we need to kind of tighten that focus a little bit, keep him under control. But based on you know the work that he puts in and the conversations we have on a daily basis, I think he's going to be able to 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 kind of close those gaps and make the proper adjustments um, for future success. Next question comes from James Fegan. Go ahead, James. Hey, Chris. Uh, long time. Um, I, I, I think at this point, at least to my knowledge, uh, the White Sox is still the, the only team that publicly that uh, is known to have the uh, vaccine requirement for players. Just how has that kind of gone over? Um, what type of like questions or, uh, have you had to answer? Or is it, is it something that's met with resistance? Or how has it kind of been received? Um, you know, it's it's... You know, last year, you know, we, we, we were very, we've been very consistent on this um, going into our, uh, the 2021 season. And now we're obviously in spring training 2022. Um, we made a decision as an organization that this was um, something that we felt that was best for the organization, for the health and safety of our, our staff and our players. Um, and, and also just to, to be productive and uh, not have distractions and miss time. Um, and based on the, the certainly the, the restrictions that are in place to just be able to go out there and focus on playing baseball. Um, once I, I was able to convey that message to both players and staff, um, it, it really hasn't been uh, much of a conversation. It, it really hasn't. Uh, every player that um, was invited to this mini camp, um, first day on the field, everyone is here. Um, and uh, we look forward to day two, but it really hasn't been, uh, we haven't had too many conversations beyond the, the, the initial when we notified everyone and we feel very good about the decision we made and the players, on, players and staff understand why we did it. You guys, uh, I think in the statement announced like 100% compliance last year, has that continued to, to this season? Uh, so far, you know, this is the, the, the first camp um, you know, you get your invitations out and you tackle kind of your first wave of players, and then we'll have full, uh, regular, a regular, regular camp players coming in, uh, which will be the full camp. And, um, I guess I, I can answer that question a little bit more clearly once everyone is here, but at this point, you know, we're certainly, uh, heading that direction. 
And to jump off of Bruce's question, do you have to prepare at all for um, a triple A roster in case there aren't 40 man players available uh, when, when the season starts? Is it, is that something you at least have to, you know, kind of have an idea of how you would shape or how you'd feel the team in, in Charlotte um, if, if you don't have, you know, usually a roster that's like about half 40 man guys? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, you're always looking to, to have enough depth um, going into to spring training because various things can happen. Um, you know, in, you know, we're given uh, based on MLB rules, you've got the 190 players for the off season and 180 domestically for in season. And you, you want to take advantage of, of, of certainly those roster spots and signing players to fill up that roster to put together the best teams that we can and puts us in a position to make adjustments in the future if need be. Next question comes from Bruce. Go ahead, Bruce. Uh, Chris, uh, can, you, um, can you tell us if the, the major league, uh, man, if uh, Tony and the coaches are in uh, camp and also um, you know, jumping off of that, is, is the mood uh, extra high and are people more, um, I don't know, more excited about being there because of uh, this, uh, this offseason that baseball's had to deal with? Uh, we do, we do have Tony's here and our major league staff and, you know, there, there's it's certainly a, a nice opportunity to get our major league staff with our minor league staff and uh, just quality exposure for our minor league players that, that perhaps, uh, you know, aren't able to, to, you know, work around, work with, um, you know, staff members that perhaps wouldn't be at this mini camp. Um, you know, uh, Tony's done such a, a great job of, uh, approaching this and not only the major league manager, but really wanted to make an impact throughout the, the organization. Uh, he takes the time to, to get to know, you know, players, whether, you know, that player's got a chance to play the big leagues, you know, this year, um, you know, it's just his, his passion for, for teaching and his passion for this organization. Um, and, and that extends to our, our, our major league staff. Um, so, you know, we're, we're all in this together, um, regardless of what titles are or positions that we're in throughout the organization. Um, you know, if anything, you know, I think, you know, just getting out here uh, and playing baseball, uh, you always get anxious to, to get out to, to spring training, to, to your spring training site here in Arizona and get things rolling. Um, you know, people that are in this game uh, in, in uh, you know, non-playing form in these uh, coaching roles, you know, regardless of who they're teaching, they just love to teach. Um, and we're fortunate to have some really quality instructors that enjoy uh, being out here and mixing in with the guys. So, um, you know, we, we look forward to, to what, you know, the, the next days look like with, with the staff that we have here. And, you know, we'll just take it from there. Can you give us a number on the guys that have been invited? Uh, is that staff, players, or...? Players. Oh, players. Uh, our mini camp, um, I don't know the exact si size, just because we've had some uh, players that were at the complex that are mixing in, um, you know, to, to our group, but it's in the, it's in the 60s. Thank you. Next question comes from Lamont. Go ahead, Lamont. Uh, who are a couple of the young pitchers? You mentioned a good mix of youngsters and, and vets there, but who are a couple of the young pitchers that you're kind of looking forward to taking a closer look at here at this mini camp? Yeah, Sean Burke, um, kid out of University of Maryland that we drafted last year, uh, had a had a, a nice nice start to his professional career career last year. Um, Norhe Vera, uh, you know, a, a Cuban signee that was at the Dominican DSL last year. Um, we've got him over here stateside, getting to know him, getting him acclimated to, um, you know, professional baseball and certainly the U.S. Uh, you know, Andrew Dahlquist, Matt Thompson, Jared Kelly, these guys have really worked hard this offseason, spent a lot of time here in Arizona. Good to be around those guys. Um, you know, and, and really we, we've got a, a, a group of arms that uh, we're just starting to get to know and looking forward to, to seeing what they're capable of doing, you know, not just in this camp here, but for, you know, for the upcoming season. 
Next question comes from Daryl. Go ahead, Daryl. Hey, Chris, how would you kind of uh, give an overall assessment of the um, farm system as it stands now? Obviously, the rankings are where they used to be, and the reasons for that, you know, we all understand. But uh, what would you generally say, you know, where the farm system stands right now, and uh, you know, its ability to, to to be able to supplement the major league roster when needed? Sure. I mean, they, the ultimate goal here is to, uh, like you said, supplement our major league club. Um, and we were, you know, very, very fortunate to have players step up last year, uh, whether it be Gavin Sheets, you know, Jake Berger, Romy Gonzalez, obviously Andrew Vaughn uh, with perhaps a little bit of higher profile, even Sebi Zavala and Zach Collins, um, you know, Ryan Burr, your mean Mercedes guys that, that, you know, not all those guys were, um, you know, high profile, and I say high profile in the sense of, you know, top of these rankings, but they certainly were able to contribute to our major league club with, with, with the injuries that we had, with the adversity that we were faced with. Um, and that, that's the ultimate goal when you're, uh, you know, managing the minor league system is to be able to provide players for your major league club when a need arises, but also, you know, you perhaps making trades to, to strengthen your major league club or strengthen the organization, you know, with the Connor Pilkingtons and the Bailey Horns, um, you know, guys, once again, that weren't at the top of the list, but certainly helped our major league club as we uh, went on to win a division title. So, you know, the system is a little bit different than, than perhaps it was in the, in the past couple of years, but we've got some really young talent um, that have some ceiling. And the expectations don't change. The standards don't change um, in regards to a, a, um, how we teach the game um, and the demands that we put on our players. We believe in our development process. We, I believe in our, our instructors. And you know, with these young players coming off of a year that they didn't play in 2020, or at least most of them, um, last year was about getting out and playing baseball. Um, but I, I'm very confident you know, with this young crew that we have that we believe in, whether it be international signings or, or guys that we drafted in, um, in 2021 are going to, you know, start getting the attention to perhaps, you know, change our, our standings. Um, but that really isn't the focus at all. It, it's, it's getting these guys out, uh, certainly want to reach their potential, but supplementing our major league club the best that we can. Next question comes from James. Go ahead, James. Uh, for um, like Jared Kelly and Norhe Vera, uh, you know, Jared with the injuries uh, and working in shorter stints and, and Vera kind of also working in, in short inning stints, what do you kind of see uh, for them this year in terms of what, what they can get up to workload wise? Is is something like where Thompson Dalquist got around 70, 80 innings last year? Is that a, is that a decent primer for what those guys can do? Or, uh, you know, is it kind of more dependent on, how they how they fare individually yeah i mean you, you, every everyone um certainly needs to be treated differently based on you know prior workloads um you know their their, their build up um but yeah the goal would be i think similar to, to to the players that you listed um you know jared's been jared and norhe have been in arizona here for for some time and uh we want to you know build them up um and put them in a position to, to have, you know, so they can look back and have, feel good about the seasons that they have. Um, so really it's about how, you know, taking care of spring training and then we'll tackle the season when we get there. We do have, um, you know, goals for those guys and they have goals for themselves. Um, but really it's about, you know, getting the work in on a daily basis and, and you know, then we'll reflect back and on the work that they're put in, in terms of innings um, and then build upon that in years uh, years after that. Uh, I feel like um, start of the season, at least last year in Kannapolis, uh, you know, struggled a bit offensively for reasons that make sense. Uh, one, there was a layoff of no minor league season. Also, uh, you know, some guys had to be a bit more aggressive without the rookie level affiliate in Great Falls. Um, was there anything you kind of take from that? Uh, were there any kind of lessons of that last year? And how do those maybe apply to handling guys like Montgomery or West Cass who, who played in complex league? Uh, you know, last year, you know, possibly making the jump to, to a ball this year. No, it, you know, you, you, you hit the nail on the head on, on a lot of the things that you said. I mean, they, those players last year had to just get out and get at bats and get innings. 
um, after not after not uh, playing in 2020. Um, you know, they, they that Kannapolis team was um, you know one of the youngest teams, one of the youngest affiliated teams in baseball, and and certainly. Uh, they showed that at times, um, but but going through what they did, I think, is only going to help them in the future. Um, and, you know, when we're talking about setting that team up for this year, um, we've got players that that, that certainly would prefer to be there than, than in the complex. Um, and, you know, you want to balance those teams to, to be as competitive as possible, uh, understanding that, uh, you know, those players are – are going to need some time to develop. I think uh, the quality of defense is something that, that that is going to be focused on when putting together those teams, um, just to make the games as crisp as possible. Um, and based on the personnel that we have, I think we're going to be able to do that. Next question comes from Scott Merkin again. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, Chris, uh, Tony had a lot of praise for Carlos Perez last year when he was in uh big league camp with the White Sox. Where do you kind of see his skill set right now and how close is he towards, you know, kind of that major league goal? What does he need to improve on? What do you like that he does already? Yeah, Car Carlos, uh, you know, he, he turned some heads in, in major league camp last year. Um, I know Jerry Naren and certainly Tony, um, they, they, they really fell in love with him, um, which it was great for Carlos. Um, and Carlos went out and you know, kind of took that admiration, gave him a little bit of confidence and, and had a solid season at double A. Um, he does things, you know, fairly effortlessly, um, or at least it appears that way. Um, you know, he's got catch and throw skills. Um, he, he can shut down a running game. You look at, you know, how, how he did that in double A and he was towards the top of the league on the catching front. Um, you know, he's got bat to ball skills. Can, yeah, certainly can put the ball in play. He's got some power. Um, we're just going to continue to grow his game in all areas. Um, you know, I think he's certainly nearing the point where he can compete um, for a major league spot. Um, you know, we believe that as an organization and, you know, he's in, in camp right now. Um, and, you know, he, he's in very good shape and he's showing the skills that we've seen in the past. And it's a good opportunity for him to spend more time with our, our major league staff and, but also, uh, continue to refine his craft and hopefully that puts him in position for success this season. Next question comes from Oman. Go ahead, Lamont. You mentioned uh, international signings. Is Oscar one of the guys that's in camp and just what do you want to see out of him as well? Yeah, Oscar, uh, Oscar's on his way. He'll be here shortly. Um, he'll be here in the next week. Um, he's been at our academy with, with our staff and, and our other players that are there. Uh, you know, we, based on the feedback that, that I've received from our staff down there, that he's, he's a talented kid. Um, he's got some confidence about him, um, can handle the bat. He's got some power, good instincts for the game. Um, but really when he gets over here, I, I want him just to be comfortable. Um, you know, he, he hasn't gone through a, a season in professional baseball or certainly with the White Sox. So I want him to, you know, to, to blend in with his teammates, get to know the staff, understand what we're about as an organization, really drill in the identity of our organization with, with Oscar. Um, but I, I look forward to, to adding him to the mix. And, uh, you know, I, I think he's going to have a very good season based on the reports that I've received so far. Next question comes from Vinny Duber. Go ahead, Vinny. Hey, Chris, how are you? Good, Vinny. Hey, I just wanted to ask, uh, you, you, Wes Kath was mentioned earlier, but uh, how, how has he specifically kind of looked to you in, in the early going of his career and uh, what could, kind of expectations uh, do you have for him moving forward? Yeah, Wes has been working very hard this offseason, spent a lot of time, um, you know, with, with our staff here, working on uh, building strength to, to the frame. Um, you know, Wes, is, Wes has got a sweet stroke. Um, you know, fairly effortless. There's they're very they're, there's a lot of ease to the operation in his game, um, and he uses the the entire field. Um, I just watched him batting watched his batting practice earlier. He's driving balls out of the ballpark on the opposite side, back spinning balls. Um, you know, he's got he's got a feel for hitting. Um, he's left handed, and uh, he's got some power potential. But we really like the bat as well from a from a hit tool standpoint. Defensively, he's got a strong arm. Um, he played shortstop in high school. 
Um, you know, he's a pretty good athlete for, for the size uh, that he is. Um, we think he's going to be a third baseman in the big leagues. Um, but I, I also enjoy, you know, I enjoy watching him take ground balls at shortstop and second. Um, and, uh, you know, he's just that type of athlete. So um, look forward to, you know, watching him go about his business. He, he, he's a pro for, for as young as he is. He's got some, some real disciplines about him. He was raised well. Um, so he, he, he mixes in well with his teammates. He's got some leadership qualities and it'll be fun to see Colson and Wes on the same side of the infield. Like we got a couple more questions. Uh, go ahead, Bruce. Uh, just for a clarification, uh, Chris, the, the 60 or so guys that are in now, they're, they're going to stay straight through, through, uh, early March when minor league, uh, camp opens or, or will this mini camp end and uh, will there be uh, uh, an in-between period between uh, minor league camp opening and uh, these guys continuing to play? Yeah, there'll, there'll be a continuation. We'll just add to the group um, as March comes. Yeah, so these, these guys more or less are getting a bit of a head start. Um, we've got some starting pitchers here and uh, some other players that we feel like would really benefit by getting out to Arizona at this point, but yeah, they'll, they'll remain here uh, up until, you know, opening day and, you know, head their affiliate, head to their affiliates if, if that's where their assignments are. And our last question comes from James. Go ahead, James. Uh, to close it on something really nerdy, uh, you guys had the announcement of uh, hiring the new biomechanical analysis, CJ Gerhardt and the, the player development staff. Was there kind of more at this point about where where you're seeing the the evolution of that department and, and what you guys think uh, is going to go with it. Yeah, we're we're excited to have CJ and his skill set. Um, you know that that's a a big piece to you know not only player development but just our organization in general. Um, you know the the you, we've we've got the uh, technological side, the analytics side um, that certainly works its way in all areas of the game. Um, and to have that kind of engine uh, drive all areas uh, of the organization is, is very important and getting in the personnel to do that is vital. Um, so CJ is gonna be a big, big part of that. We've got some others that are gonna be helping on that front. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, 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 almost at this point, it goes without saying that, that that's an essential piece to, to baseball um, and maximizing the potential of our athletes. Um, it's something we've been doing for the last couple of years. Uh, we've learned um, a tremendous amount about what, what athletes can do, what baseball players can do in, in regards to creating power um, and strength and uh, having their bodies move efficiently. And, and certainly the hope is to not only be um, you know, powerful performers, but, but can remain healthy uh, you know, within the, the challenges of the game. Thanks, Chris. I uh, really appreciate, appreciate you taking the time to talk with the media today. You got it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, thanks for everyone for joining, and uh, we'll have all the recordings posted soon. Uh, and that's it. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. <laughs>